I'm in Shenandoah National Park and this is the Elk Wallow picnic area. This is mile marker 24 up in the Northern District. Skyline drives up that way and it's just a big loop around here. There's my little red car. And I'm going to head over here where it says uh, Jeremy's Run Trail and Appalachian Trail. Going to get on the AT for a short uh, distance and go down and then get on Jeremy's Run Trail and hike down Jeremy's Run for a few miles and, and back. The elevation here is 2375. Two tenths of a mile into my hike. I'm down to 2270 elevation. And this is the spring for the Elk Wallow Shelter. It's pretty wet and sloppy back in here. I'm not sure how good this hike's going to be. When I get a little further down the mountain, it may be too hard to cross Jeremy's Run, but we'll see. Anyway, there's the uh, spring. It's running pretty good. And there's the signpost for it. <clears throat> and the, uh, the Appalachian Trail is right, right up there. So I'm going to backtrack just for a second and, and uh, show you where the Elk Wallace Shelter used to be. It was pulled out years ago, like maybe back in the 1960s. But the uh, spring is still here and it's still running. Okay, I just backtracked uh, maybe 50, 50, 60 feet. That wet spot down there, if you go to the left, that's where the, uh, that's where the spring is. But I wanted to do, uh, just show you this, just right back here, that is, <clears throat> well, that's where I came from, down the Appalachian Trail. And right there's the road, the access road that used to go from Skyline Drive and come down here and it crossed over and went over there and the Elk Wallow Shelter was just right over there. I don't think there's anything left of it. I'll go up there and see if there's any remnants. I don't think there is though. It's been gone since like maybe the 1960s. So, but anyway, that's where it used to be. Well, I pushed my way back in here a couple of hundred feet, and uh, I got a feeling this is where it was right here. This is, a, this is an open space here. Um, you know, no, no, no big trees. Um, there's a couple here that, that were cut down decades ago that are just laying around here. Oh, there's my GPS just beeped. So this is a spot on the map where it was. And yeah, I mean, if you look around, you can see all these big trees, except right here in the foreground, it's all cleared out. So this is, this is probably where the shelter was. I think once they put Skyline Drive in, this one was deemed to be too close and too easy to get to. And people started abusing these shelters. They turned them into party party shacks and that sort of thing so but anyway I think this is where it was right here four tenths of a mile into my hike I'm down to 2230 and uh, that's where I came from that's the Appalachian Trail maybe you can see the white blaze on that tree and uh, when you get down to here, you got a uh, crossroads here. The Appalachian Trail goes to the left, 
and we're going to continue straight on this Blue Blaze Trail, which is Jeremy's Run Trail. So straight ahead. I'm on Jeremy's Run Trail here. I'm descending fairly steeply, getting down towards Jeremy's Run itself. I don't know. It's rained here, uh, well, for the over the past week. It's rained most every day, but it didn't rain yesterday. But this this part of the trail is not too wet, but it's it's been pretty wet. Okay, well, I just got done talking to some hikers coming up the other way. Uh, they got, they said they got down here to the first cross crossing of Jeremy's Run and turned around and came back up. They said it's way too high to cross, so this could be a pretty short hike when I get down here. I do have my Crocs with me. I could put them on and wait across, but I don't know. We'll see. One mile into my hike, I'm down to 1,890 feet, and uh, <clears throat> I just read the metal bands there. They're a little confusing, but it looks to me like if you go to the right, that's the uh, Knob Mountain Cutoff Trail, and so by process of elimination, I'm just going to keep going straight here, assuming this is Jeremy's run. One point two miles into my hike, I'm down to eighteen hundred and eighty feet, and uh, there's Jeremy's run. There's where I came from, and uh, eventually, going to have to see if we can get across Jeremy's run, but we'll see. Just going to keep heading this way for now. One point three miles into my hike, I'm down to eighteen hundred and thirty feet. All righty, here's Jeremy's run, and yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna have to wait across here. There's some blown down trees, but look how steep the bank is over on the other side. Well, I brought my Crocs, so let me uh, let's do at least one crossing that way. And I don't know how many times I'm going to have to cross this back and forth, but uh, let's go across here and keep going for a little ways. Well, I waded across. Holy cow, that is cold water. I may just hike in my Crocs for a little while because I think I may have to cross this a couple of more times here within the next mile so we'll see anyway that's the first crossing let's just keep going well it's a good thing I still have my Crocs on look at the trail oh man well we'll push on a little further hopefully this is just a low area. If it's like this for a long distance, though, this may be a turnaround time.
There's Jeremy's run. One point six miles into my hike. I'm down to seventeen hundred and eighty feet. Here's the uh, next crossing of Jeremy's Run. It's coming around a bend upstreams that way. A little bit of a beaver dam there, and then that's looking downstream. I still have my Crocs on, so I can wait across here. I gotta, I gotta look at the map though and decide how much further I want to go hiking in, in Crocs. Um, I mean this was originally going to be three miles down and three miles back. I'm, I'm, only a, I'm only halfway down to where I was going to turn around. So I don't know. Let me study the map, see how many more times I think I'm going to have to cross this thing. I'm afraid that this thing just winds back and forth across here. But anyway, let's get across here and until we get down to the next crossing, and that, that'll be a decision point for me. One point eight miles into my hike, I'm down to seventeen hundred and forty feet. And here's the next next crossing of Jeremy's. Here's where I came from. It's really muddy and squishy up there too. There's looking upstream. And the crossing's right here. And then there's Jeremy's run looking downstream. I'm approximately at my Jeremy's run waypoint number two. I think I've about decided I may hike down to waypoint three and then turn around because I don't I, I don't want to have to do this whole hike in my Crocs uh, with no socks on and stuff. I'm going to end up with blisters doing that. So let's cross here and we'll go a little further and then I'm I think I'm going to turn around. Two point three miles into my hike, I'm down to sixteen hundred and fifty feet. I just uh, talked to a large group of people that were hiking up from the bottom, and they from here on down, it's just a big wet mess. So I think I'm going to turn around here and start heading back. I've got at least three crossings on my way back up before I can put my uh, hiking boots back on. So. Uh, I think what I'm going to do, uh, uh, the waypoints that I had don't make any sense to me from 10 years ago. So I, I don't know what I was doing or what I was thinking, but those waypoints don't mean anything to me after hiking it again. I'm just going to mark the, uh, I'll mark the stream crossings down to here and, and give them waypoints. So at least uh, somebody looks at my map, they'll know how many crossings they've got to go. That's a tulip poplar bloom. And that is a tulip poplar tree. 
and they get really big. That's one, uh, that one, that particular tree is not all that, that big around, but it's, it's decent size, but they get really, really big. And the leaves look a little bit like um, maple leaves. Two point nine miles into my hike, I'm up to uh, 1740, heading back towards my uh, car now. And here's another crossing. Um, I still have my uh, Crocs on. I think I've got three crossings, including this one, to go, and then I then I can put my hiking boots back on. And as I go back, I'm going to record the. Uh, locations of these crossings so if somebody else wants to come down through here they can they can figure out you know how far to go there's a bug on my lens Three point one miles into my hike, I'm up to seventeen hundred and eighty feet. There's another another crossing of Jeremy's Run. I think I have one more crossing after this, and then I can put my hiking boots back on. Three point four miles into my hike, I'm up to eighteen hundred and forty feet, and uh, another Jeremy's Run crossing. I'm thinking this might be the last one, not counting a little feeder stream. I didn't count that, so I'm I'm thinking this is the last major one. We'll see. Four miles into my hike. I'm climbing through 2,000 feet now. This is the steep part of the hike. It's about another half a mile up to my car. And I've got another almost 400 vertical feet to climb in a half a mile. So, yeah, taking a rest. Sitting on a rock. Jeremy's Run is down there, like way down there. And here's where it came from. And uh, so I'm going to sit here and get my breath and then keep on climbing back up to the top. When I get up near the uh, where the old shelter used to be, I thought I saw like a little side trail, like a beaten path off this main trail. If I see that again, I may, I may jump off and explore that for a second because it's up on a rise. And I got a feeling that might go to some kind of a little campground or something, you know, informal campsite. Four point four miles into my hike, I'm up to twenty two hundred and twenty feet. Here's where it came from, <clears throat> up from Jeremy's Run. I'm above it now, and this is the little side trail that I mentioned that I noticed coming down here, and it's heading over here into this area that's it's got a lot of trees, but it looks like it might be 
a little a little camp zone over here. Let's go take a look. Uh-huh. Yep, just what I thought. Nice little camp spot back in here. And actually this whole area I'll mark this with a GPS point. This whole area over here is pretty nice. You had to beat down a little bit of a brush here and there, but it's it's nice and flat. It's under these trees. And I see another spot over that way. I'll go over there too. I'll mark this spot, just a general area, which includes that. There's a bug on my lens. It includes that and this this open area here. And that cleared off area over there too. We'll go over there and check that out. Okay, well that other camp spot I just showed you is over that over that way. And I beat beat my path over to here. And uh, yep, here we go. Look at rocks arranged there. No fires allowed, but uh, I bet you there's been some fires back in here. I mean, that looks like a fire pit right there. See that? But even if you don't have a fire, you could sit on these rocks back here and have a little, little meeting of the mines, a little powwow. Then there's this spot over here, which is nice and cleared off. And then that's the way out, that way. So... It's a pretty nice area right in through here. This is a map of today's hike. The quadrangle name is Thornton Gap 1994 and I hiked a section of Jeremy's Run. This is Elk Wallow Gap, mile marker 24. This is up in the Northern District. And this little loop right here is the Elk Wallow Gap picnic area. It goes around in a loop and then here in the middle is the actual uh, picnic tables and stuff. But you come in here and if you go all the way to the end and park right here, there's a uh, trailhead right here that gets you to the Appalachian Trail, which is right here. And then you get on there and you follow the Appalachian Trail down to here. Well, eventually you follow it past the, the site of the shelter and turn left and this is the Appalachian Trail continuing on to the south. So I hiked on down to the spring. This dotted line right here is the old fire road that started up here at Skyline Drive and provided access down here to the shelter. Now the shelter was taken out decades ago but uh, I've tried to point out in my video where the old road is down here and how it crossed over uh, and continued on a short distance to the shelter. And then here's the spring. And then when I was coming down this way, I noticed that there was a, there was a trail that veered off to the right. That turned out to be the old the old road. When I got home I realized I didn't I didn't actually hike that. I hiked this pink part. They've rerouted it like this. And then when you get down to here it, it runs back into the old road and continues on down Jeremy's run. So I hiked this green part to here and then 
if you stay on the trail, you'll you'll end up hiking this, this pink part, down to here. When you get down here, you'll start actually seeing Jeremy's run. And then what I ended up doing was I saved the GPS locations of the crossings that I had the water crossings. One here, another one here, another one here, and another one here. Now I was going to hike all the way down to here and then turn around and come back, but when I got to here, uh, I decided not to go any further. This whole area was super, hopefully it shows up on the video, but this whole area was extremely wet and muddy and sloppy. And Jeremy's Run was running pretty high and getting across Jeremy's Run at each one of these crossings, you basically have to wait across to get, to get across it. So one, two, three, I didn't cross here, but that's the next crossing. So I crossed three times going down and three times coming back. So that was the hike for today.